Dune is one of those pinnacles of science fiction literature. It's a giant that's weight can't really be measured to a lot of other works. And it has a new movie coming out fairly soon. So it seems like the opportune time to talk about it in terms of a world-building sense. Now, this isn't going to be the only time I talk about Dune. Dune has a lot of ground to cover, even if I just cover the six books that Frank Herbert wrote. But what do I want to talk about today in terms of Dune's lore? There's one thing in particular that fascinates me in how the world is built, and it explains a lot of details about the why and how and some of Herbert's own personal philosophy in regards to the way things work. And that is the Butlerian Jihad. Now, it's rarely mentioned in the text of the novel itself. And in my copy of the original novel, what does it say about it in the appendix? The crusade against computers, thinking machines, and conscious robots begun in 201 BG and concluded in 108 BG. Its chief commandment remains in the OC Bible as Thou shalt not make a machine in the likeness of a human mind. That is everything that the original book has to say about the Butlerian Jihad. Now, I should mention that Brian Herbert, Frank's son, and his writing partner, Kevin J. Anderson, have written a trilogy of novels published between 2002 and 2004, that detail the actual happenings of the Butlerian Jihad, but that's not what we're talking about today. I want to talk about how the world was shaped by the Butlerian Jihad, by the connotation of the first book, and some of the details that arise because of that. Now, Herbert has talked about why he chose this detail as something to happen in Dune's backstory, and part of it has to do with the nature of science fiction. Science fiction generally focuses on the grandiose technological scale that some civilizations possess, and Herbert didn't want that. He wanted to talk more about the human emotion and the ideas behind that. So, by removing and banning all thinking machines, which does include calculators, he has effectively removed the science element out of science fiction. That is not to say that there isn't advanced technology. They are a spacefaring people, but they have reverted back to an almost feudal society in terms of their political structure. Herbert himself also viewed that the human experience is one of boundless options and creativity, and that the idea of the machine limited those options, and thus limited the experience that is human life. It's also a way that he used to explain some of the powers and abilities that people have developed as part of this world, also in part due to the many, many things that Spice can do. There exists this group of people called the Mentats, which are essentially human computers. They exist as a means of keeping things that a computer is needed to do, like advanced mathematical calculations, but without having to have a computer on hand to do them. Three of the main powers at play in the world of Dune also display machine-like qualities, and the way that the people work and the lack of machines was something that made Dune its own universe, and something that helped it stand out from the crowd of 1960s science fiction that was popular at the time. This is still a very new format to me. I'm not super used to video essays. I want to make more of them. I'll probably make more about Dune in the coming months and how that works, but this is just kind of really a test run of the way I want to change World Builder as a series. But until then, you know, hit the like button, subscribe, do that. Keep, stay tuned for all the other videos I have coming. I've got a lot planned. I just need to sit down and film them. Follow me on Twitch if you want to see me do more tabletop stuff. That's the other half of this channel right now is talking about world building and talking about tabletop. But until then, I'll see you next time.